live from London outside Buckingham Palace. And this morning, we remember Princess Diana, pregnant just four months after she and Charles got married. And she tried to give her sons as normal an upbringing as possible. And in doing so, she has become quite the role model for Kate. If Kate has any doubts about how to embrace motherhood in coming months, she should look no further than the example set for her by Prince William's mother. When it comes to mothering a future monarch, royal watchers say Princess Diana set the gold standard. Diana lavished her boys with affection and she was truly a loving parent, which in many ways broke the mold of traditional royal parenting. While Kate will enter motherhood as a seasoned adult, she'll be 31 when she gives birth, Diana was only 20 when she announced that she was pregnant with William. The announcement came in November of 1981, just over three months after Diana wed Prince Charles in a wedding watched by the world. The press had begun to speculate that Diana was pregnant weeks before the announcement, notably when she fell asleep sitting up at a formal function. When it came to fashion, Diana was the master, even while pregnant, donning pieces that were fashion forward for the 1980s. And when it came to royal duties, Diana showed she was ready and willing to perform, pregnant or not, appearing beside the queen, greeting well-wishers. But when it came to tradition, Diana showed that while she was thrilled to birth a royal, she would do it in a decidedly modern way. Prince William was the first royal baby to be born in a hospital. Diana reportedly labored for 16 hours in London's St. Mary's Hospital and followed a natural childbirth plan which included sucking on ice with Prince Charles by her side. Word of William's birth was spread via a paper announcement attached to the gate of Buckingham Palace, prompting an elated nation to celebrate the birth of a future king. From the beginning, Diana insisted on keeping her infant son by her side. Prince William was the first royal baby who was brought along on a royal trip. She insisted that she would be bringing him. She would not leave him behind. And part of the reason for that was that she was breastfeeding, also very much unheard of amongst the royal family. Two years later, when she gave birth to Harry, Diana's hands-on mothering style continued. She regularly played educational games with her boys in their nursery and was actively involved in drop-offs and pickups at a day school in London. In the royal family, children as young as six and seven had been sent to boarding school, but that was not okay with Diana. In later years, William and Harry would call Diana, quite simply, the best mother in the world. Those are some big maternal shoes to fill, but royal watchers predict Kate is up to the challenge. I think William and Kate's parenting styles may be somewhat similar to what Diana did. And I think William and Kate are really going to sort of follow that model to do everything they can to ensure as normal a childhood as possible, while at the same time behind the scenes educating their child for their future role. <laughs> And I know it's a little early, but yes, names are already being floated out there and they may not surprise you. For a girl, we're hearing Elizabeth and for boys, Charles or Edward. And yes, British bookies are already in on the act. Six to one odds that the royal baby is a redhead, Josh. I'll take those odds, Lara.